All right, the time has come to finish the assembly on the... No, the laser rifle here. <laughs> Welcome everyone, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield, and my, one of my projects since January has been upgrading my old Fallout 4 laser rifle to go with the Minuteman over here, and finally, after like nine months of work on this thing on and off, it's time to actually finish it. So I've got a bunch of parts here to assemble, paint up, all that fun stuff. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna talk about basically why I chose certain parts to be EVA foam, certain parts to be other things like 3D printing and aluminum and whatnot. So let's just get started with the build process. Now the goal of this video is to answer a fairly simple question, which is simply, why didn't I just find a nice high resolution model of the laser rifle online, which you can do, and 3D print the whole thing? So let's take a look at some of the parts of the rifle here and see why I did not go down that path. So let's start working on the rifle here along the very bottom. I did a little bit of work on this back in the first episode of the rebuilding series. Just find a link to the playlist in the description of the video for all the other videos I'm gonna reference here throughout this video. I say video a lot. So the main structural component here is an aluminum rod. And the reason for that is 3D printing does not work very well for this type of structural support. What I find for 3D printing is that it works great when there's basically certain ratios between width, length, and height. And I'll talk more about the details of that in a bit. But in this particular case where you've got something that's very long in one direction and very small in the other direction, so very long length and the width and height is very small, 3D printing just doesn't do well. It tends to snap. So basically along the length there, it'll snap at one point, especially if you get a situation where, because it's so long, you can't 3D print this in one piece, at least with most printers anyway, and you end up having to glue several together and it'll snap at the glue points. Also, if you start gluing several together, it won't be nice as straight as an actual manufactured aluminum rod. So that's what's going on here. Now on one end here, they've got the front of the muzzle of the particular rifle. This is 3D printed because it's not really a big structural component. It does hold a little bit of weight, but it's got a little bit thicker in some dimensions. But more importantly, this piece needs to be symmetrical across basically left and right. And therefore that makes it a very good candidate for 3D printing because I want it to be exactly symmetrical. The old EVA foam piece of the front muzzle of the rifle here it actually wasn't made with by hand and it didn't look quite right. So the 3D printed part just looks a lot better. At the opposite end of the aluminum rod, I actually have a plastic piece that's attaching it to the main body. Now this plastic piece is not 3D printed. It's actually HDPE high density polyethylene. No, it's UHMW, ultra high molecular something. It's, it's basically robot armor. <laughs> At least that's what UHMW is often used for. It really isn't, but that's what we use it for, right? And this is important too, because once again, if you got a very larger thin piece, 3D printing tends to snap, whereas a solid piece of this UHMW will not, and it makes it a much better structural component than thin 3D printed parts. So let's take a look at some of the other parts that I 3D printed. For structural components of a certain size, 3D printing works well. And also, as we just saw with the front muzzle, Things that need to basically be really precise, 3D printing works great. Now those two things combined here with a forward hand grip, which is a piece that's not too big, it's got enough bulk to it that it won't crush or snap with under pressure. And also being a cylindrical shape, which is kind of a complex shape to do with say EVA foam and these little ridges on it, this is a great part for 3D printing. As well as the piece that attaches behind it, going back towards the area of the trigger. Now that piece has a really funny shape to it, and that funny shape is really difficult to get with EVA foam in terms of bending it with heat and whatnot. So therefore, that weird shape makes it a good candidate for 3D printing as well. Earlier in the series, I worked on the back of the rifle. I showed you how to model this back piece here. And this is another great example of something that's of a good kind of almost almost a cube size. It's not gonna take a lot of pressure where it's at, so don't have to worry about structural issues, but it's got a lot of interesting details in terms of the bolts and things like that, so it makes it a great candidate for being 3D printed. So I'm taking off the old EVA foam back here and I'm sticking this one on in its place. Now some of the other parts that were 3D printed were a lot of the more interesting detail parts. Along the back of the aluminum rod here, I've got some little gear things that I've 3D printed up because they're small, don't need structural support, and they got really interesting tiny details. 
I tried to make these with EVA foam last time, cutting little strips of foam up, and it was kind of a nightmare. I've also got these small little side pieces that attach to them. Those also work well for 3D printing because they're small and they need to be relatively stiff. Of course, the trigger here is also 3D printed. Well, not the spring, but the trigger part is. I did a video on this earlier where I went through the details of how I designed it, how I hooked up the spring, and of course, how it interacts with the switch to activate the light effects in the front of the rifle. Then, one more video we did earlier, actually did a nice detailed tutorial on these pieces where the side detail pieces that go behind the trigger. Now, these are a great cannon for 3D printing because they're relatively small, don't structural support, have some interesting details, and once again, very importantly, they need to be symmetrical. So you can design one of them, print two of them up, and make both the left and right side of the rifle look exactly the same. When it comes to this project here, for finishing the 3D printed parts, I'm using Mod Podge. Once again, a whole bunch of videos on this. Mod Podge is great for post-apocalyptic things. If you want to go down the route of making it look like it's a rusted metal object, you can do that with Mod Podge by applying different layers, sanding parts down, and things like that. A little while ago, I modeled up and painted these guys on the channel. They're the fusion cells from Fallout for this particular rifle here. And the idea was that, that a little opening up here that would fit the battery, which would power the electronics for this rifle. But you know what? If you're going to design that feature into your cosplay, make sure the battery fits in said location. So, made some modifications, got a new one here, battery fits great. Now I gotta make another one of these guys. Let's talk about the two big parts that are not 3D printed. The first being the stock. Now the stock and a backbone that runs to the rifle attached to the stock is quarter inch plywood that's then covered in EVA foam for some added detail. Now the reason why this is not 3D printed goes back to the whole thing with the metallic rod is because once again it's very long and very narrow and that's a great way to have something snap, especially the stock being the one, it keeps the rifle straight, so therefore you need a straight piece to make sure all your other stuff attached to it are actually lined up straight. Long 3D printed parts, if you don't design them right, tend to get a little crooked, and you have a rifle that's kind of curved, you don't really want that. Using the stock when you're taking photos, as it would be in an actual rifle, well, it's going to be a little bit of stress on it, holding up against your shoulder, those kind of things. And you want to have a decent structural strength there because it'd be easy to break in those circumstances. Or even just carrying it around, if it bumps into somebody by mistake, it may be prone to breaking as well. The other part of the rifle that's not 3D printed is the main barrel. This is relatively a rectangle. It's really long. This part probably could be 3D printed if I wanted it to. What I try to avoid with 3D printed parts are things that have big flat faces. Because what may happen, depending on how you do the infill, if you got big flat faces, you put pressure on them, they kind of cave in, and they snap that way. Now here, with the barrel on the laser rifle, you're not putting your hand around it to put pressure on it or anything like that, like some firearm you might do. So you probably could get away with 3D printing here, but keep it lighter and keep it simple. I went with EVA foam for the main barrel. Well, that is it for the build process of this video. Let's move on to some painting. I've got the basic paint colors down. Now we're gonna take the next step, which is doing weathering. Now, unlike some people who like to smother the whole thing in paint and wipe off parts of it, I tend to apply my weathering effects in a very specific locations, or at least try to avoid doing the whole coverage thing, because frankly to me, maybe I'm just terrible at it, but that just makes it look like I've smeared paint all over my piece, and I don't want that look. Well, with that, guys, let's call this build done. Except, shoot, I forgot one little thing here. I got this little wire sticking up. I'll fix that afterwards. So after this segment's done, we can call this build done. But thank you guys all for watching with the completion of the laser rifle here. This is one big series out of the way. And, you know, whenever I finish a prop like this, I'm always looking at it and like, huh, I can do that, that, those little details better. There's always more things on this I can do better, add a little bit more pieces or something like that. So maybe in the future we'll get back to working on this. 
But I got Microflash to finish up next, call that series done. And then I'll be getting back to working on the UNSC Marine 3D printed armor. So that'll be kind of the big series taking us into 2021 and that kind of stuff. But between that, I'll also be doing some more robotics work. I've got maybe a few more random projects here and there. i got one more woodworking thing coming up. And then lots of speed painting for miniatures. So some Star Wars stuff, Warhammer, and of course Battletech Clan Invasion. So if you guys want to see any of that, go ahead, subscribe. Until next week, well, have a great week. That sounds weird, doesn't it? But whatever, you know what I mean.